And we are live. What is crackalacking, everybody? This is Joe from Shooting Gallery New England, and I'd like to welcome you back to the Shooting in the Woods podcast episode. Uh, well, oh, well, just messed up on that one. But yeah, welcome. I just had to mute the YouTube. Uh, so, welcome back. This is episode 24 of the Shooting in the Woods podcast, and we have a great discussion plan for tonight we also have richard hughes from flyingrich.com and the richard hughes youtube channel uh all that stuff will be in the description i just got home from work everybody so i'm kind of lacking on the description right now but by the time this is over this will be posted and everything will be the way it's supposed to be so tonight we are going to be over going over a few things we're going to be over over how to get your significant other to get into the shooting sports and loving guns so you don't have to lie to people and you have to lie to your significant other when you buy uh, a brand new rifle or handgun shotgun whatever it might be and we will also be talking to richard about the iraq veteran 8888 range day that he just attended to he's posted over his instagram and uh his car got all messed up with the mud so that's what we're going to be look, talking about tonight. I'd just like to urge people to like, share, and subscribe this video with all your friends. And don't forget to hit the notification bell in the bottom right corner to get notified when a new video or podcast is going live on YouTube. And thank you for all who's recently subscribed to the, the channel. We appreciate you all. I think I can get a couple of them up now to shout you out. Uh so we have, if I mispronounce everybody's name, I do apologize. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, looks like, uh, who have we got so far? Scrolling down. I've got a couple people that's subscribed. And our live chat is active. So if you have any questions or like to chime in on the discussion tonight, please feel free to drop that down in the comment section. I will shout you out. We have a new subscriber. Mrs. Mel269, thank you for subscribing. And we also have, let's see how far I can go down to get the other two that subscribed. Uh, we got uh, Peace Loving Guns posted something on our stuff. We appreciate that. And we got Tom Arnett. Thank you all for subscribing. We appreciate you all. I want to give a big shout out to DC Channel Guns. I just recently subscribed to him. Everyone go check him out. He posts a ton of content. Great content. Go check him out. Uh, I've been liking a lot of the stuff that he's been posting lately, but he uh, he's all over my notifications. So please go and like, share, and subscribe to his videos as well. We all got to get a start somewhere. So tonight, the reason what brought this up, is I have just got back from a vacation to the lovely state of Pennsylvania, and I was in the Pocono Mountains, and I'm not going to lie, it is on my list to hopefully live there one day because the Poconos is an absolutely beautiful place, and it was for my anniversary with my darling wife, and and she's standing, sitting over on the couch right now smiling at me very oddly, but I love her to death. And yes, I am drinking Allagash White. If you got a problem with that, too bad. It's amazing. Um, so we, on our anniversary, we decided to go to a great shooting range in Pennsylvania. I don't know the town. I want to say it was H Holly, Pennsylvania. And it was 3B's Indoor Shooting Range. They are, without a shadow of a doubt, nicest people I've ever had to deal with at the range. It ran by a husband and wife. I didn't get a chance to check out that pro shop because I had a lot of other stuff going on that day. But I, me and my wife decided, okay, you know, we're in the area. Let's see if we can get to a range maybe if this place we can go rent guns. So we were able to rent guns. And now I'm going to go on records right now saying that my wife is not a avid shooter. She's gone with me a few times. It's kind of a slow start, but I'm not going to push it on her because that's how you kind of turn the other way. But she's had this general interest and, you know, she's gotten her, she's taken her class by me to get her uh, concealed weapons permit and she hasn't done it yet, but, you know, she's easing her way into it, which that's a great starting off point for our conversation. So at 3B indoor shooting range, and I, I want to say it was Holly, Pennsylvania. Um, we, you know, just figured, Hey, let's just do 22s. Not nothing crazy. 
So we got a Charter Arms double action revolver. I don't know the model number. I want to call it the Pitbull, but I know I'm probably going to be wrong on that one. Uh, it was a double action, double single action revolver, and it was like a six shot. She decided she wanted to shoot that. And now I like semi-automatics, and I tested this firearm. It is a it was a Colt 1911 variant. I don't know. Again, I don't remember the the model numbers, but for a 22 1911, that was the smoothest shooting 1911 22 I've ever shot, and it was insanely accurate. I loved the trigger pull, and since we were in Pennsylvania, we actually got to shoot 15 round mags without them being pre banned or anything. Um, just kind of keep looking at my phone and waiting to see when Richard's going to be coming in. Richard Hughes is going to be coming around 9 15, everybody. Uh, he's just coming out of the live chat from the Who Moved My Freedom podcast over in the Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Uh, Hank Strange, go check him out. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Han. So it's not in, uh, it's in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. That's where the 3B shooting range is. Honesdale. Uh, I just got a text from my wife, who again, who was sitting on the couch about 10 feet from me and sent me that. Thank you, honey. Uh, so yeah, she shot very well we had a kind of like a active shooter target and only shot at about 15 15 yards because you know i just wanted to get her you know down to the repetition and had a prop your proper stance you know you know modified isosceles triangle stance and um get her working the trigger get a proper sight picture all that stuff and for her like fourth time shooting she shot like my double action revolver before that in 22 mostly all 22 she hasn't shot anything over 22 yet and she's also shot uh, a single action revolver she shot a 22 mark pistol i have a 22 uh a ruger mark 4 22 she shot all those and she's done fairly well but for a first time fourth time shooting she was getting you know center mass hits give or take about that wide with the double action revolver. She didn't shoot single action. She shot double action every time. And I was thoroughly impressed and she started to actually like it. She was always afraid of like the weight of the gun. It was going to be too heavy. Now this is what I want to, you know, pose to the live chat and anybody listening so we can start a conversation. Obviously 22 is the best way to start a new shooter. What are some of the ways that we can try and get our significant others to get more into guns, whether it be getting their concealed weapons permit, bringing them to the range, um, letting them know that, you know, certain things are actually legal to own, like suppressors. Unfortunately, in Massachusetts, suppressors aren't legal, but other things like having an AR-15 in the house is not a felony. It's, you're not a, a terrorist for having an AR-15. Um, who else can we get involved in to let it could be again you could be a wife trying to get your husband into guns this isn't the uh only men to wife it could be wife to men or men to men or wife to wife we don't judge here you know we're very open to everybody so it, it all depends it's significant other into the firearms uh world so that's what i'd like to talk about um one of the things i like to always stress is do not badger them i I've done it a few times and it's very difficult for someone who's kind of uneasy around firearms. They haven't really shot that much, but at the same time, you want to make they're comfortable. They don't want to be, they don't feel pressured. They don't feel like they have to, it's like a job for them to do. You don't want that. They want it to be a fun, relaxing time. You know, you get to blast off guns all day. Who wouldn't want to do that? You know, I think one of the big things you want to stress here is you want to make sure that your significant other is going to feel comfortable. Don't start off and give them like be, you know, that typical range a hole and give your girlfriend a 357 Magnum that she's never shot in her life. And it's probably a, t a three inch barrel because you think you want to be cool and show how big your manhood is. And that's probably the number one reason why most people do not get their significant others in the guns because they make those stupid decisions um so caliber is always going to be the best choice always go with 22 
maybe get him into like a 25 ACP, something very small where the recoil is very manageable. 380 is like pushing it, depending on what type of handgun you fire it out of. And we're just talking handguns here. We're not talking rifles because there's certain pistol caliber carbines that'd be a great for new shooters to figure out. Um, but we're just talking handguns specifically at the moment because that's typically what a lot of, you know, for, you know, in my personal stance, my wife loves shooting pistols. She's not a big fan of rifles. It's, but she just likes shooting pistols. So I'd like to say, what does everybody who's listening right now, or even if you're listening to this after, we are gonna we are on um, Gunstreamer. I suggest you go follow us over on Gunstreamer at Shooting Gallery N E one word, and we'll be able to you know you can get a, catch our content over there. We all gotta have cross platform and everything like that. So write down, shout down in the comments. What are some of the ways you get your significant other to go to the range when they're kind of on the fence about guns and, you know, the whole aspect of it. Cause to be quite honest, when me and my wife first met, you know, I, I didn't have any guns. And later on, I just started like, Oh, I got my gun license. And now this mushroom clouded into a lifestyle that I hold near and dear to my heart. So, and you know, first thing obviously is, is guns are expensive. Yes. They can be very expensive. They can be, you know, quite challenging at times to understand why somebody spends so much money or what, what have you. Um, so first off, obviously get a gun that if you're just getting into guns and you want your wife to get into it, don't get something. Don't like go out and buy a Wilson combat 1911 in 45 ACP. That's going to automatically turn your significant other off, whether it be a wife or husband or whatever it is. Um, Start off with something generic, like you know, there's many affordable first handguns out there, especially in the 22 realm. You know, you can get if you really want to go down to the bottom of the barrel, you can get a Taurus. I don't suggest it because their quality control has kind of gone up and down. I'm not saying I hate Taurus, they just I don't know, I wouldn't trust it. But you know, if you get into like a nice SR22, a Walther. Uh, P22 or a Ruger Mark IV, Mark IV, uh, 22, uh, Mark IV, 2245 Light, uh, Smith and Wesson Victory. You know, I think on the upper scale would probably be a uh, M and P22 full size or compact. That'd be on the upper scale of the price range. Uh, or again, a nice 22 revolver. You know, Ruger makes the LCR. Smith and Wesson makes the six. I don't remember the the nomenclature. I want to say it's the six thirty five. I could be wrong. Oh, looks like Richard's coming in. Let me add him real quick. Hey man. All right. Hey, what's going on, Richard? Yeah, hiding out here in Orlando. Oh, you're not at the Hughes compound. Not at the Hughes compound, Southern Command. I'm over here at the Orlando outpost. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there's. Well, hey, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, we are talking about how to get your significant other into shooting, and also we're going to talk about the shenanigans that went on at Iraq Veterans Range Day. but <laughs> <laughs> Or better known as Mudfest. Mudfest. I actually have a sweatshirt that says Mudfest on it. It's an actual, <laughs> it's an actual trucking thing. Oh, but, man. Uh, yeah. So how have you been, Richard? Good, good. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the significant other into shooting, so – I I was working in Minnesota. I was a Florida resident, but I got my Minnesota permit first. And then I bought a pistol here because you can only buy pistols in your home state, which mm -hmm. whatever law that is, I don't know and why it makes sense, but it has to do with these things. So, of course, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not um, constitutional. Yeah. So, actually, I bought an LC9 was yes. my first pistol. Okay. And uh, my wife's like flipping out. She's like, you're going to shoot me with it. You're going to shoot me with it. I'm like, just quit <laughs> complaining. I am going to shoot you with it. It's going to happen. Yeah, just, just get it out there. It's done. Just quit complaining. <laughs> uh, so my wife initially was like borderline hoplophobic. And then I'm not sure what year it was. I think it was like five years ago. So my wife was living in Manhattan during 9-11. Yep. And that's when she became a rhino. She stopped being a Democrat and she became a rhino. 
And yep. she gets mad when I say rhino, but she was a rhino. She she didn't know why she was a Republican. She just knew she wasn't one of them, the folks with the D next to their name. So uh, I used to listen to Mark Levin as we rode in and out. We were, when, we, uh, when we first got married, we were working in Manhattan. We'd ride the Long Island Railroad into the city to go to work. And occasionally, like, we'd share headsets because somebody forgot their headset. And I'd be listening to Mark Levin. And she says she never heard him, but I'm really sure she did. So it was one we we're at a timeshare in Orlando because my daughter was going to a flute camp nearby. And she's like, what are you listening to? Boom. That was it. She is now like the Jehovah witness of conservatism. <laughs> she is like Looney Tune about it. And her, her father, nicest man in the world, great guy, just he's completely left wing nutnik. And so is her sister. Um, we went to a speech and I'm going to get to the point. Yeah. Uh, we went to a speech this past weekend and it was supposed to be a conservative speaker, but basically it was like orange man bed. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, which was kind of cool because, That's amazing. Uh, you know, he was like, it was kind of like foreign policy for a knitting circle. It, it was so if you take somebody that thinks he's the smartest guy in the room because he's got a PhD and then dumb it down to like a knitting circle. I mean, it was like night of the living dead people going into the place. I shouldn't make fun of them, but everybody was oh. like on a walk or a respirator or, you know, or a mask. <laughs> Oxygen it, and they probably all paid 50 bucks to, to watch this guy talk about, you know, talk out his butt about crap. He didn't know anything about, but he did have a PhD. Yes. Uh, my father-in-law paid for my wife and I to go, and we wore our MAGA hats. Oh, um, man. That, that, that's, that's some uh, risky risky uh, choice there. Do you know what? I, I See, now, here, we, last time I was on, I kind of hit on this. You know what? I, I don't want to put a MAGA sticker on my car. I'd put the MAGA flag. In fact, on my block, if I put my MAGA flag, people would probably salute it, you know? Um, <laughs> but yep. yeah, you, I mean, I, uh, I'm in the redneck portion. I live in Jupiter farms, which is the redneck portion of Palm beach County and yeah. absolute redneck in my neighborhood. You know, there's, it, it's going to sound more rednecky than it actually is. But as you drive into where I am, there's cattle, there's, yeah. you know, it's only maybe a 20 acre piece of land with cattle on it. And they're probably only doing it because then they get a tax exemption. But you know, there's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. there's people with cattle on their property in my neighborhood, but mm. so actually, so the second thing we did Saturday, which was totally cool. Uh, Dennis, Michael Lynch, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but look him up. Sounds familiar. So my wife is crazy involved in the tea party. Now, uh, yeah, okay. the, yeah. uh, president of the tea party invited us, uh, DML Dennis Michael Lynch had this thing, which was totally cool. Totally right wing. It like cleansed my soul of that earlier crap that I went to. So I was pretty happy the about that. Knitting circle. Yeah, the knitting circle uh, <laughs> for foreign policy and all this crap. And Orange Man is bad. So <laughs> what? <laughs> my wife. That's hilarious. The whole Orange Man is bad thing is just like. I, but people actually think like that. Like it. Like it sounds terrible to say, but like people actually think like that like i'll admit my wife isn't the biggest orange man we're gonna use that same quote orange man fan but then again she's not really a big politics person anyway but oh all right, all right so one nobody in my family cares a crap in fact my daughter my 17 year old daughter cares more about football like the super bowl and i got explained football to her i played football in high school yeah but I'll be damned if I spend my time watching grown men play a kid's sport and get paid millions of dollars for it. Mm -hmm. And my, my sport and my wife's sport is politics. That's, I know everything about politics. I know all the plays. I know all the quotes. I can quote people back in politics. It's like, I'm a nut job. Like there's, you know, I got buddies that are sports nut jobs. I'm like a nut job with politics, but so long way to get around to what I'm going to tell you and how to get your, the answer is how to get your, or the question was how to get your wife into shooting. My wife uh, started listening to podcasts and one of them was uh, actually, it was me. I went to the West Palm beach 
um, Libertarian Party, they had Chris Ann Hall there speaking. And that was it. My wife, like, totally on board with Chris Ann Hall. And it was earlier this year. Now, my wife has gotten into shooting because of the constitutionality. It's like in, to the point where she'd call me up when there was some sort of scare. Uh, you ought to buy more AR-15s. Like, I <laughs> do have a number of them. And she's like, buy more now. I'm like, done. No problem. I got it. I wish I had that ability to do that. <laughs> If my, if my darling of a wife, again, I'm saying that because she's sitting 10 feet from me while I'm doing this podcast, um, said, you need to buy more AKs and more uh, um, high points or something like that that are affordable. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Oh, my gosh. I wish I would well, do that. I so in, in just so you know, most of my AKs are like Palmetto State Arms or, or something like that. Oh, you don't uh, have but, any arsenals or like Russian made AKs because that's all you need I'm to sorry, have. My when it comes ARs, to AKs. I'm sorry, my ARs. I've oh. got um, oh. an underfolding AK. I, I think, who is it from? A, a Century Arms, you know, imported. Yeah. I forgot what it was, but, you know, pretty low end kind of thing. But uh, yeah, not, I don't have any high end guns. Uh, yeah, the, me the most expensive gun I have is the 5.7, which I paid like 1200 bucks for. And believe it or not, I got a deal on the PS90. I paid like seven and change for that. And this is when things were going nuts. They gave me the military law enforcement discount, and I'm neither. I said, does Coast Guard Auxiliary count? And he said, yeah. I'm like, done. Send it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love think it. I was 820. I, I think it. Anyhow, so. My wife started listening to Chris Ann Hall. Chris Ann Hall had a thing with the Bearded Black Cowboy earlier this year. And if you ever get to do some training with the Bearded Black Cowboy, go do it. And I kind of figured I'd do training with my wife because I know a lot of people in Florida here that I'd like to do training with. So I figure if I'm like, all right, we'll go to Texas and do this training, which I figured they're going to say, this is a gun pointed at the target. Yeah. Shoot. <laughs> you know, I figured it was going to be, uh uh. There wasn't anything I didn't learn in that training that I, Everything was new to me is the right way to say it. Yeah. The crazy good training. Go go train with the bearded black cowboy. And he's also a good guy. And Chris Ann, so this was with Chris Ann Hall. So it was a, a good thing. Um, so that my wife got into conservatism by listening to Mark Levin. And I think it's a Jewish thing because Mark's a, a Jew. My wife's Jewish. So I think, you know, people are talking. It's kind of like when somebody talks with a Long Island accent to me. <laughs> you know, that I'm like, oh, a, a friend. Uh, so <laughs> I, I think I've yet you know, to have someone say, wow, you know, we can be friends because you have a Boston accent. You like, wait, I was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, exactly. That's all I got. I went, we stopped in Poughkeepsie, New York on our uh -huh. ride up. You know, it's a five hour ride. I left at five o'clock in the morning. So, like, eight o'clock in the morning, I'm looking for a coffee break. So we stopped in Poughkeepsie. You know, I had, you know, bathroom break. First thing, oh man, you're from Boston, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, because and know, I'm like, coffee. okay, yeah, in my head, I'm coffee. like, coffee, exactly, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm not from Boston particularly. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts, <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, I can pick your accent out of a like out of a cloud of room, okay? Like, who are you? I, listen, Red Sox have won. You need to just kind of get along. <laughs> 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 we had Babe Ruth first. First, just get over it, okay? Or I just do the – oh, and this pisses people off. Listen, Tom Brady is the GOAT. Just say <laughs> that. Conversation either gets incredibly intense or it, get, it just stops because they're like, okay. And I don't really watch football, but I just say that to mess with people. But uh, so, yeah, my wife uh, took took the deep dive. Uh, she's, she's a big fan of Dan Bongino. Actually, she got Dan Bongino to come to her local – tea party yeah i and, saw that on your uh, instagram post a while oh, okay ago. yeah that's like he was doing a book signing so i had him you know i i've got the note eight so i took the picture and had the stylus out and i'm like oh can you sign the picture for him? so <laughs> uh that, that was that um but yeah where where i want to so it's a degree of difference where i want to go to the range and I'll, I'll spend all day there shooting my wife's done in like 45 minutes you know she's like uh, it, and it's kind of funny. She's got a lot of perception issues. 
uh, like I hand her the PS90. She's like, oh, that's too heavy. I don't want to shoot that. I'm like, really? I'm like, mm. my daughter, who was probably 12 at the time, shot it, you know? Uh, mm. So, yeah, fun. weight weight of the firearm. Sorry to interrupt, but weight no, of the firearm would. It's, yeah, I mean, the PS90 isn't particularly heavy. You know, it, it might look like it's heavy because it's big and black and, you know, bulky as opposed to like an AR-15 looks kind of bony compared to it, you know? Yes. If yes. if you're putting and, and forgive me if there's women out there that are going to be mad at me and call me sexist, um, and I I want to come out as a flaming heterosexual. I just <laughs> love women. Well, at the same time, you know, if, if you're going to give like perfect example, I have a client right now that's looking to buy a car. She's like in her late nineties. Oh. She's like five two, may, and I'm saying maybe and the steering wheels above her head. Oh. Uh, you don't even want to know. <laughs> Maybe a hundred pounds soaking wet. So you say oh. you hand that woman and like an a, again an AR fifteen. It's going to be very heavy and bulky. Or she'd get hand- PTSD. It'd be like a bazooka went off. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> or at the same time, even if you handed like her a ten twenty two with a wood walnut stock, that's right, going to be right. very heavy. So again, weight in again caliber. Obviously, I'm sticking with twenty two because you don't want to be that a hole that gives someone a thirty uh, three fifty seven and says have a ball. Right, right, and, and so that that's I think men are just as bad because look, shooting is a bit of a macho thing. Yeah, um, you you want to make sure you're not handing somebody like you said a three fifty seven. Oh, here's a little gun, shoot it. Like women will think like this smaller gun is better to shoot. So it's like my my LC9 or my LC9S is not the first nine you should shoot. You should be shooting a full-size nine because there's more mass. There's exactly. going to be less recoil. It's going to be more manageable. Uh, but uh, So I think there's a little bit of perception on, on stuff like that. But my wife, she shot the uh, – I got the Thompson Center Compass 308, but I got a pretty effective break on it. Yep. So she was shooting that and enjoyed it. So That's she had not that fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, um, like she's again, she shot like my Mark IV uh, target. Um, she's tried shooting my Marlin Model sixty. She wasn't the biggest fan of it just because she's not a big rifle shooter. And uh-huh. she shot my single action Heritage, and she likes that. So you know that's what I'm kind of sticking with right now. Like she did take a shot of the Colt nineteen eleven in twenty two that we shot. She did like it. It's just it was a little bit like heavier than the actual. Um, than the actual like revolver that she was shooting. So, you know, weight, you know, she was hitting about center mass about that. Eh, trying to get this in the camera. I like that. I'm trying, you know, Illuminati, you know, just throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, just but, don't do that symbol because that, you know. Oh, yeah. Everyone just has to lose their mind. Um, but, you know, or was again, it this way. Was it? I, I don't know. Did, did, did we th- if we're going to throw up gang signs, we can do that, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm not at the level where I can, you know, kind of like totally pirate uh, Hank's jazz hands things. I'm never going to pirate oh. that because I don't believe in piracy. I think I, I think it's, you know, a serious infringement, you know. Uh, but still, at the same time, well, you, I, you, you were you're watching Hank's show. I was watching it earlier. Yeah. So, you, you know, he turned in his Audi R8 uh, with the lemon law. <laughs> no, he did not really. He pulled the lemon law. Wow. No, he didn't pull a lemon law. The nav system would kept going bad on it. Yeah, yeah, I would I would pull. So he should have bought was, a Jeep. I was teasing Hank. I said, "Yeah, that's okay cuz I ch- I put my old chewing gum under the passenger seat." I didn't, <laughs> but Yeah, well, tell him if he wants to, you know, get a, a sweet Jeep Grand Cherokee, he can I can do uh got to get a Trackhawk. You you could sell him a Trackhawk. If he wants to make up, make the trip. I'll make. I'll work the deal for him. I will do a trade. Everything. We'll get that thing. Hang strange stickered out. I won't <laughs> handle it. But we. That will be like the. He could do like a, a like you know the brown nose tour across America. It could be the Hank Strange tour across the East Coast with that trackhawk. Yeah. You know? We'll get Tyvin to do some vinyl graphics for us. Yeah, yeah. I'll have Tyvin. I have Tyvin's number. He can send me the vinyl graphics, and I'll put it on for the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> but all joking aside, yeah. Um, oh, wow, I just lost my train of thought. But anyway, well, uh, 
um, the weight and you know once she uh, started shooting the once I started shooting the semi-automatic, her grouping got a little bit off, but still she was able to maintain it. And she's like, "Wow!" Her first thing was, "I thought these guns were going to be like way too heavy." I'm like, "No, that's not how it works. You know, it's aluminum, and you know, right, right." Uh, what was what's the stupid laser thing? I know Dan Bongino uh, hooks it all the time. I I can't remember what it is now, but my is wife actually gun? got that. Uh, well, it, you put a cartridge in, and the firing. Oh pin yeah, hits. Um, it's on every the one of the only YouTube ads. Uh, I want to yeah, say Laser Max. Is it Laser Max? No. I know what you're talking about. It's like one of the only ads that play on gun gun videos <laughs> on YouTube. Oh, is yeah, yeah. I'm looking for it, and it's I like can't you remember. Yeah, the, it, the, it's actually pretty good. I I got to make an odd confession. I can't shoot my Canic TP9 worth of crap. I could hand it to somebody else, they'll shoot it perfect. I can't shoot it. You know, whether it's like muscle memory, I'm just... I'm the same way with my Glock. I, I've been finding that with my Glock 19 right now. I have shoot my Glock 20, no problem. It's a Gen 2. I target. Yeah, I target. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, the Glock 20 I have, I can shoot that all day long. That's why I carry it. My Glock 19, I can't hit the broadside of the bar with that gun. I don't know why. I... I but I've shot uh, my P85. I've shot m ps I used to shoot a shield. For some reason, the 19, I've been practicing. I've gone through like 500 rounds. Can't hit the broad side of the barn with it. That's crazy. That, yeah, I, I don't know. And it's probably just the same thing with me. Like, I'm most accurate with my Ruger SR45. So that's the thing I'm most accurate Great with. Great gun. Great gun. Um, I'm probably nearly equally accurate with the uh lc9s yeah i the only, which is like shocking. small frame yeah the small the only small frame gun that i could never shoot was the original lc9 before they got the remember how the original lc9 had the trigger it was a horrible trigger yeah. oh oh man yeah most small well, frame I, guns i can shoot but that one i just i could not now the the original LC9, I would hold the center line. I would have to aim about here, and the the impact would be somewhere between like the neck and the belly button. If I was shooting uh, Smurfs, yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> shooting Smurfs. <laughs> hey, you know, th there's people like that out there, you know. Well, because the the break on the trigger was so horrible. Oh, it, it was, was horrendous. You know, I could I could hold the center line, but not the vertical. The, ugh, just yeah. It, it was absolutely like a gun horrendous. Stop, but I in in to really redeem themselves. I I've owned two LC nines in an LCP, and I've sold all the originals. I got two LCP twos. I have one LC nine S, and those the striker fired unbelievable. They are so good. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've shot the LCP two. I again, I have behemoth hands. So it's just I, I hate to go with the whole it didn't fit my hand, but no, that, that gun is just so I cannot handle it. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Look at that. I I have an alcoholic beverage in my hand, so I have no guns around me at the moment. I try to be responsible. And I and I was coming from work, so the twenty's not fitting underneath my suspenders. So <laughs> you know what the problem with with this is is I, I keep it in this it's kinda like uh, neoprene coated nylon like wetsuit material. Yep. is I'll wash the car and do something wet, and it holds the moisture, and I was getting surface rust on this. Oh, okay. Yeah. I uh, my, my uh, The only thing I get is the uh, I get a little bit of surface rust because of sweat on the very mm -hmm. like rear, like right above the back plate on my Glock. That's about it because I carry appendix, but uh, other than that, oh. I... In the I don't know if they're still making the LC nine S, but there's an EC nine S, and it's right around two hundred bucks. And, and <laughs> I've been waiting I for would... that to come mass compliant. It hasn't. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. I think the Security nine is just about to become mass compliant because they're coming out with like a uh, another mm -hmm. model that's like yeah. Same thing with the Security nine. Another really good gun on a budget. Yeah, I love the the Ruger American pistol. I love that gun. It just didn't take off I, like that. That again fits my hand and it's so mm -hmm. comfortable to shoot, but it just never took off. Okay, so and then, I'm I'm a lefty and yeah. I shoot poly all my pistols are polymer, so I always switch my ring because I was gouging the yeah. grip with the ring. 
Yeah. And that's another thing to add in too. If your wife or again, a husband, it doesn't matter either way. If they're shooting a pistol and I, again, I'm just going off pistols because rifles is a whole other topic, but what do they have for their, you know, how many rings do they have is the watch that, you know, they're wearing, or, or a girls, you know? Yeah. With, uh, yeah. American gun trick has that, you know, bib, you know? Yeah. The, <laughs> the brass catcher. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I that's the one thing I'm like adamant about. Even when I do classes, I'm like wear a t shirt. No, oh, there's yeah, no, yeah. there's no crop oh, tops. Polo shirt. I I'm at an indoor range, and I I must had, you know, a hundred rounds through uh, my. Let's see, why am I going blank? Uh, what's the Ruger rifle? Uh, oh, the M14. Okay. Yep. Uh, it's the Mini 14. Sorry, Mini 14. Had like a hundred rounds through that thing. So the the chamber's cooking hot. Well, yeah. a round ejected hit the divider and then landed right ah. here on my collar, and like Ooh, well, yeah. that. I mean, it looked. You know, the spearmint rhino is right next door to <laughs> uh, to the shooting range I go to. Yeah. So I come home. I got like this massive, you know, casing hickey on my neck. Yeah, it's like no, yep. no, honey. I I was only at the range. I said like, Gator guns, not yeah. Not the I, Ryan, really, I had a twenty-two casing hit me right here. Went through my glasses, and it oh just, no way. Yeah, and because I usually wear my hat frontwards, so it, it, mm -hmm. I always wear a hat. So if it hits the visor, right. but for some reason I wore my hat backwards that day, and I sl they slid down, and I had a burn, a perfect twenty-two uh, casing burn for like a month and a half. All right. I, I used so, to have to go to customers when I worked when I was a painter, I, and they'd be like, "What the hell is that?" I'm like, "And like they know what it is because it's a it's a bullet casing." Right, right. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you remember uh, Military Arms Channel. Tim was shooting the Steyr Aug left handed, and the casings are ejecting and hitting him in the face. He's like, "Oh, oh you yeah, can do it, yeah. no big deal." Yeah. So I'm a lefty. I shoot a Steyr Aug. I shoot it twice. <laughs> I don't have yeah, a big right bushy, here. you know, tactical stash going on here. I had two like crescent shaped cuts in my upper lip. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to shoot anymore. I'm cool. And then I look, yeah. you know, tactical in the mirror, stash. I'm like, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah. Like my, my tactical I, stash. I'm I haven't sent the picture to Tim yet. I got to send the picture to him. <laughs> Who yeah. wasn't at Iraq Veteran 8888. I, I heard, perfect. I overheard somebody say he wasn't going, but yeah, perfect transition. So, for those who don't know, every every October for the past couple of years, Eric and Chad seven. from Seven. Oh, I thought. Oh, I don't know how long this. Again, this is for how long I've been watching YouTube. Uh, I don't know how long they've done it, but okay. So seven years. Um, Eric and Chad from Iraq Veteran eighty eighty eight do a YouTuber shoot called IV eighty eight Range Day. Everyone goes, bunch of vendors, machine guns, you name it, they have it. It's supposed to be a ball. I did not yeah. go this year. I did not get an invite. I'm going to be hounding whoever I have to hound next year to go because that's other than NRA annual meeting. That's the next one. Our local, our friend Slav Guns, definitely for those who are wondering, Slav Guns, go check his channel out. Great channel. I think I'm going to be on his podcast next week. Uh, he's trying to get me to go to SHOT Show, and I said, F that. I'm not doing SHOT Show this year. I can't afford a week in Vegas. So, but yeah, no, whoever I have to, you know, grease some palms, I'm going to, I, I'm going to range day next year. And it's going to be, there's going to be Allagash after the whole thing. We're going to have a fun time, and I'm going to shoot a ton of machine guns. And well, I, uh, you know, I, I saw a gun doctor there. He brought his wife, a couple of guys, uh, Black Diamond Guns and Gears. Uh, they they brought their significant others. Yep, so... I had them on the po I had them on the podcast. They actually have the record mm -hmm. for the long for the longest podcast time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it went out. It went out like an hour and a half, and we were just like towards the end, we were talking about like pro wrestling at the end, and I, I could tell the other Josh, like the the, I'm not trying to be rude, but the skinnier Josh. Um, was just like, yeah, yeah. And, and me and the other one was just like, oh, yeah, dude, this is going to be awesome. And his face was just like, okay, this is kind of dumb. Like, I'll watch it, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Black Diamond Guns and Gary. They're a great group of guys, and wonderful people. Yeah, they're good guys. Um, I I finally met Joe, 13C, because, okay, you know, yeah. I know him from Hank Strange. I know him, you know, he would do a live stream on uh, Instagram on Fridays. I was on that a couple times with him. And I was actually working up in Michigan. And I'm like, dude, why don't we get together? Just things never worked out. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, another good guy I, I got to meet and hang out. I'll tell you what's funny. He he was with another guy. And the guy must, I don't know if he listens to the podcast I'm on or, you know, other YouTube channels that I've been on. He's like, oh, you know, he's like talking about things I've said and quoting them. I'm like, holy cow. You know, wow. That, that sticks with people. It's funny when, you know, you say something kind of obscure and then they, they come right. Oh, yeah, I blah, blah, blah. Same thing here, too. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, yeah, I did talk about that. Mm. I I so, haven't I haven't had that issue yet. Um, I I don't I, know the past couple weekend the past like weekend like well not this one because I was on vacation but last weekend over the week every major YouTube channel or even small big to small they got an email from me. I sent them to We Like Shooting Military Arms Channel. I hit up Hank. He never hit me back up, so I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> um, no, I hit he, up. Yeah, he's not. You got to talk to Lola. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go through his wife. I don't like to pull that card. I don't like being like, yo, I have to, I'm, t- I'm going to your wife. I'm not gonna pull that card. I, I hit up Steven Crowder, James Yeager, he, 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 you name it. I message literally everybody. Hmm? What the heck? Yeah. So, but so what actually went down at uh, Range Day? I saw from the um, uh, or Mudfest, as you like to call it. I saw from the <laughs> videos of everybody that went that it was like a monsoon for like you know, an annual monsoon. So- all right, uh, I'll, I'll tell you. First off, I, I probably did one of the dumber things I ever did in my life because uh, in Orlando, I'm two hours north of the Hughes Compound Southern Command, which means two hours closer to Georgia where the range day was. Hmm. And uh, so I drove home because I had the bird with me and I left him at the house. Uh, so I drove home Friday on Thursday night. That's it. I took Friday off to drive. I left Friday morning uh, after pulling out the pressure washer and blasting the bugs off my car. (laughs) And as always during hurricane season, I go to nhc.noah.gov and I look up, make sure there's no hurricanes, you know, whatever, anything, all that kind of stuff. I didn't put it together till about noon while I was driving in the car. It came to me. I'm like that storm in the Gulf wasn't going to my house, wasn't going to my office, but it's going to where I'm driving. I'm like, ah, (laughs) so i get there it's it's like a six and a half hour drive and being as dumb as they come i didn't book a hotel ahead of time and there were cabins on site they're actually pretty nice when they when brandy announced that they're available i didn't book one and i should have um anyhow I, i know what to do next year Yep. So seven hours I got there, I'm hanging around, I'm talking to people, I drove around, people are setting up, it was dry, it was dusty, whatever. Um, I found a hotel half hour away, what was it? it was, I forget what it was, but it was like the worst version of that hotel I ever stayed in. I, I was shocked. <laughs> Um, you, you, the Marriott, the Marriott, you know, are you no, a Marriott no. type of guy? No, no, like it was the Econo Lodge, I think. I think, yeah, it was the Econo Lodge. I was about a half hour north, yeah. and it, you know, when you open the door and like the door handle hits the wall and there's like door stopper, well, there was like a spackled hole that <laughs> wasn't painted, you know. There, okay. I, you want to talk about bad if- hotel rooms? We stayed <laughs> at this place in, in uh. Pennsylvania. It wasn't a bad hotel room. It was actually a very beautiful uh, resort, but this place was out of like 1973. Okay, the wallpaper was like again out of the 70s. You walk in the door. There's a painting that you know most think people would think a painting would be straight. It was crooked, like it was full. And I'm like, oh, let me adjust it. It was glued on to the wallpaper. Oh, Circular bed, shag carpet headboard all the way around the circular bed. Heart shaped jacuzzi that I was just like, I am not like I rumor and innuendo and all that good stuff. Your thoughts can go to this. The amount of X rated videos that were probably filmed in this resort, I kind of got skeeved Uh-oh. out. Yeah, it, it dude, it threw a very, very serious run, Jeremy vibe. Uh, I'm not, exp- I'm not explaining who that is. You can do your own Wikipedia search on that. Make sure if you're under the age of 18, your parents are not in the room for that. But yeah, it w- but it was it was a very cozy hotel room. It was a Tempur-Pedic bed. I'm not going to lie. The circular bed was Tempur-Pedic, so I was in heaven. And, uh, you know, I-, I had a very fun time, but it was, oh, it was just, <laughs> it was hilarious. When we walked in, we we're like, oh my God, the wallpaper is like, so not this. 
you know, I, I got a jacuzzi tub in my house. I don't think I, in, in five years of ownership, I think I was in it once. Yeah. And, and my wife's used it a couple of times. And I've never been in that stinking tub with my wife, which. Yeah, you're going to have to change that up. My Even my wife was like, I'm not going in that freaking tub. It's no <laughs> way. But so, yeah, so it was raining and you clearly went to Mudfest. And now were you, I think so, I couldn't remember what you had. Was it an Audi that you have or is it a. Oh. No, nah, no, nah. I got a uh, 2015 Genesis Coupe. Okay, okay, that's so, what the Genesis. Yeah, so uh, I, I've been dropping videos. I, I didn't drop a video today. I, I got to look at what I got to to put out. Um, I, I have a couple of videos. I'm going to do a vlog video of the trip, and I got some, you know, vendor videos. So anyhow, um, Friday night, so I, let, let me roll. They had a... Low Country Boil Friday night. And if you look at my Instagram feed, so I'm Flying Rich Official on Instagram. And my website is flyingrich.com. Sorry, my daughter's texting me. <laughs> She's like, no I need worries. a headshot. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I used to do photography work. Not, not that headshot, that headshot. So um, they had a Low Country Boil, which was shrimp, sausage, and let's see, corn in uh, in potatoes, and they had beer. So, all right, first off, being cheap as I am, everything's <laughs> free. That that's the most important thing. Oh, it's they, they're not paying oh, your yeah. gas, they're not paying your tolls, and they're not paying your hotel room. Last year, you could have camped at the range, but uh, uh, this year, there I I think there's camping you would have to call the arena training facility to find yeah. out what's going on but uh, and that was blakely georgia anyhow friday night there was a dinner i think uh that was put on by a couple of the vendors i, I don't want to name the wrong vendor because then somebody will be mad at me but thank you very much for the free food and so there's everybody from youtube is there so whatever gun guy from youtube and you know it's kind of so a lot of people came with a crew you know they brought their own posse so i'm i'm going solo so i'm kind of yeah. walking around and uh i walked by brandy which is mrs iraq veteran yep and she's like hey rich you know say hello i was like oh shoot you know i thought that was her and i'm you know i can be bad placing faces at times oh uh, yeah i'm the same so i'm way. like mm, what's that brandy and if i say so and i make a mistake will i make myself look stupid or yeah and so I sat down talked with her she's the one that runs everything so uh, yeah. if if you don't have her contact information i'll, I'll get it to you uh, uh brandy's super nice and first off it, i'll 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 like die saying this. Everybody in the gun community is super nice. There was one guy that's a dick and he knows who he is. But, uh, oh, who would that be? I'm not saying, I'm not getting into it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, that has been <laughs> talked about. I, I, uh, I saw Gun Drama Johnny and I was going to say, hey, how come you didn't do a show on this one? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just like, every time that, like, that the one we're talking about shows up, it's just like, <sighs> okay <laughs> so any kind of community is small yeah in in especially like youtube gun guy community i i used to work at a porsche repair shop and there was like i knew everybody across the country there were people that knew me so i'd go to a porsche event and people would know who i was and that kind of thing and, and that's many years ago ancient history uh, but yeah, communities are small. I, and like, I'm also involved in aviation and I know a lot of people yeah. that have the same type of aircraft I have that doesn't work and I can't pay to fix. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, the communities are small. So when you make yourself an ass, yeah, uh, you don't, yeah. be prepared to be exiled. You know, that, that's, that's the short of it. Uh, cause word travels quick and nobody's going to want to have anything to do with you. That's why uh, so, nothing fancy. That's why nothing fancy. He doesn't do any podcast. He doesn't do any like he used to do shot show, but doesn't do shot show. Doesn't do any award shows. He is like a ghost. Great content. He probably he seems like oh, yeah. a very nice, funny oh, guy. I've never had any contact with him. I've I, I watch all his videos, but again, I don't even know anybody that knows him. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> yeah he he's the clandestine YouTuber. <laughs> in, in 
I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell the story on the air, but uh, there, there's, there's stories like that. Like you, you end up making a whole bunch of videos with somebody, and they end up having something bad happen or go wrong or something like that. Hmm. And if you don't know the story, I'll tell you sometime offline. But I'm not going to yeah. name names or anything yeah, like that. But, but it happens. Like you, you, you risk your reputation by collaborating with somebody and they could end up being a jerk in a big yeah, way. Exactly. And so, but at least with the Iraq veteran, they kind of, that's how they, that's how it's kind of like technically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's technically it's invite only. So it, yeah. for, it's only YouTubers. It's not fans. I think they were trying to do a fan thing a while back. I don't know what it was, oh, I don't but know. yeah. Oh, they, I remember they were saying they're thinking of, they were thinking about doing something for uh, subscribers and stuff like that, but it's just, it just didn't pan out. Uh, just the amount of licensing and insurance. They just, they figured keep it to YouTubers and that's why they control it though. So they don't invite, you know, be quite honest, dickheads to it. <laughs> you know, right. And, right. And in, they, it's a fun time. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and so the last range, uh, the 2018 shoot, the range was kind of small. Yeah. Um, and people were a lot, shooters were very densely packed. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think it's uh, at the arena training facility. Randy said she was going to have to book the place that weekend if they're going to do it there next year. And yep. basically, I, I'm going to find out if, if she did book it and I'm going to book the cabin. <laughs> and I'm trying to talk my wife into going. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk my wife into going too. I think she'd have a fun time. Yeah. Either way, I'm, I'm okay. Let's do this straight here. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my invite no matter what. If you know <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Shooting Gallery doesn't want to come, that's on her. But I'm going no matter what. <laughs> okay, I'm just throwing that out there. Again, I'm saying that because she's ten feet from me right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, I, I I definitely am gonna have to hit Brandy up and be like, yo, like hook a brother up, and you know, sure. I'll probably be that like very shy person anyway because it's gonna be way no, too many no, people. No. No, you, so you, to have fun, and I'm still not good at this. You, you yeah. just got to be like a bull in a china shop if you're going to have fun there. Yes. Yeah, uh, walk up to I'm, people, say hi, tell them who you are. Right? There's so many people because you see them a certain way on yeah. YouTube. Like they're wearing, you know, rain gear, and it's like, who is that? You know, because yeah. uh, so. All right, Sunday night, low country boil. I got there early, um, waiting for the food to come out, that kind of thing. And I, you know, you don't want to be the first one pulling yeah. food out of the pot either, because you look like a jerk. And yeah, so yeah, it's the second gotta... one. <laughs> <laughs> second, yeah, yeah, yep. Um, so I, I ran into Black Diamond Guns and Gear, and you know, saw a couple other people, and said hello, and started talking to him. And, you know, I was kind of walking around. I was like, kind of heading back to my car, and all of a sudden, I hear, "Rich, Rich, get over here!" And I'm like, oh, "Who's that?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's Coda Boy 32." It's like, "Hey, dude, oh. how's it going?" <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, what a I nice can, guy. What I've a, heard he's know, a very, very nice person. Like, he's very like welcoming. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it, so. I, I was sitting next to him at uh, Iraq Veteran 2018, and you know, just just started a conversation with him. And people are walking up. They're like, "Do I have to kiss the ring to say hello?" And it's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah, people are like, "Really?" But well, that... I, I spent. Go oh, sorry. Yeah, go. Yeah, on. yeah I, go I, on. I spent some time. You know, just. I was standing around Brownells, so I don't know if you know Josh. He's got like all the piercings and. No, but and me and him, me and him, I think could be friends. You know, so get me five minutes with him, we'll be best friends. Uh, Josh is like, I mean, he might look a little, uh, you know, unlike clean shaven, whatever people, but great guy, great, yeah. super nice guy. Um, the you know, I stand around there, and Such came up, and we were talking for like half an hour, like you know, me, Such, John, you know, Coda Boy Thirty Two. Uh, Joe thirteen C was there, so it's nobody has an ego, or or at least if they do, they're hiding it really well. So go up, say hi to somebody. I I was texting, you know, Tim over the past year. I'm like, oh, I saw you at you know the 2018 shoot. I didn't say. He's like, why do you say hello? Come on up, you know. It it just looked like 
you know, he was always doing something and he had yeah. people around him. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just, you know, I'll be the bull in the China shop. Go up, say hi, blah, blah, blah. Well, so I have this running, I have this running joke with, uh, Brandon, uh, from the AK, the AK guy, Brandon, Brandon Herrera. Yeah. yeah Brandon Herrera. I have a running joke with him. If I ever see him, I'm just going to like kind of barrel hug him. And, um, <laughs> I told him that when he was on my podcast and he was like, I appreciate if you wouldn't do that. And so just to like, that'll probably be the icebreaker. So to see, you know, a large man, three ninety six two, just barrel hugging the AK guy. That, that would be, that's a meme that could just ruin the internet right there. The, but, and Brandon's a fun guy. Uh, yeah, he was, you know, he was awesome. I, I'm hoping to have him on the podcast again. He's, he was awesome. So uh, my, I was kind of shaming my friend, Pat, uh, my friend, Pat, I, I do a podcast called the Linux link tech show and Pat's in Pennsylvania. I'm like, dude, come on down. You know, uh, we'll go to the Iraq veteran shoot together. He's like, no, I'm busy. I can't come. <laughs> So yeah. I, I don't know if you saw the video, but I had everybody, all the famous YouTubers say, hey, Pat, wish you were here. Sorry you couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just want to give a shout out to the uh, chat right now. We have Miss Mal 269 Thank you for showing up. And yeah, you got to get the boss something comfortable that she likes. Key feature is getting something that she likes to shoot. It's comfortable in her hand. And I appreciate you subscribing recently. I gave you a shout out at the... Uh, the beginning of this podcast so thank you for subscribing is it if it's mr smell 269 or mrs <laughs> mel 269 i can't uh, again sorry if i butchered your name brother um so other than that what vendors were at uh um oh, I, I know cmmg wow. was there and yeah uh, cmmg was there so pretty much anything they had was full auto so you know, <laughs> have fun with that oh, yeah. um Palmetto State Armory was there. Century Arms was there. Um, Elevated Silence was there. Okay. Uh, you know, of course, Brownells. And, and so I didn't know where they were because there's like four different locations. Crazy yeah. Quail was there. So you could shoot clays. Uh, I mean, so there. I don't know what could be more fun in life than not only going to an event that's completely free, but then <laughs> shooting fully automatic firearms that you don't have to load or pay for the ammo so uh yeah did, did they have the uh anvil and full auto there i know they always had the mutant and full auto i don't know if they had the an the cmmg anvil uh you know i'm not sure I'm yeah not for sure those if they had that. yeah for those who were wondering the the cmmg anvil is the 458 socom rifle it's amazing um <laughs> i know they, it, i now, over it I don't know where it was. I missed it, but they had a 50 BMG there. Was it the on a tripod? The, was the safety ever firearms, or was it the? No, no, no. A, a 50 caliber machine gun, and people oh, were shooting. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, I'm like, man. I I don't know where that was, <laughs> but I'm looking at video, and I'm like, I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's I. I it, it that's again. I'm gonna try my hardest, and you know, Brandy, Eric, Chef, you're all. If you end up ever seeing this, hit me up on Instagram. I'll hit. You. I've been. I trust me. I'll blast them up this year. We'll have to. We'll have yeah. to definitely meet up next year. Or if you're, you, you, you said you're probably not gonna go to NRA anyway, right? No, no, it's not. Look, I, I'm so financially screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple of lean years and lived off the credit card. And I'm working on refinancing and getting that debt paid down. Yep, yep, I know how it is, my man. I know how it is, you know, but still the Iraq veteran shoot seemed fun. Everyone goes oh, there. Yeah. Um I know for I I Hank was at a wedding from what it seems like. Yep. Yeah, in Louisiana. Um, in yeah, Hank, Hank, yeah, Hank was at a wedding. Military Arms Channel wasn't there because he was off doing Tim Tim was off doing Tim things. I don't know any of these people personally. It's just I'm very big fans of them. I'm hoping to get them on anyway. And I know the gun collector was there. They were doing something else. Um, oh, I don't know. They could have been there. I don't know. I didn't see any content. Uh, was Hickok there? Hickok 45? No. No. no he so they didn't. There. Yeah, I know. He's I gone didn't in the see past. him there last year. Yeah, I know he's gone in the past. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, you know, most people usually do like a montage of the uh, range day. I know, uh, give a quick shout out to Shoot, Ride, Live. Uh, I know he watches it from time to time. He said he's going to try and make it next year as well. I got to get him oh, cool. on the pod. Yeah, I'm going to try and get him on the podcast. He's got to answer the DMs. 
Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, I like the amount of direct messages and emails that got sent this weekend were uh, well, last weekend were atrocious. Okay, so now it, it's just who's ever going to hit me back up. I got, I just got firearms policy coalition. They told me to hit them up. Cause I, you know, for those who don't know firearms policy, po firearms policy coalition are the first other gun group other than the NRA to challenge attorney general, Mara Healy's bogus assault weapons ban, 10 round magazine ban in Massachusetts. I saw that loved it. And I told them I want them on the podcast to talk about it because they are the only other gun rights organization that is challenging. Really? GOA isn't doing anything with that? I haven't seen it. Again, they got to answer their messages. <laughs> I'd like to get them talking about it because, you know, the only thing that bothers me in the community is everyone focuses on New Jersey, New York, California. You know, the place where Liberty was born always gets a dark cloud over it and no one ever knows it's there, you know? It's it's like it's like North Dakota. Nothing happens in North Dakota, and everyone forgets it's the state, or even the Dakotas in general. You know, Massachusetts is turning into that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and get them on the podcast. Richard, I appreciate you coming on tonight. We did reach a milestone this week. I looked at my videos, and I have two videos that have breached five hundred views. One was on oh, a holster. Cool. Yeah, one was on a holster, and one was on a shotgun. And the twenty twenty two videos getting up there in views so people are liking that so that's again milestone we're still trying to get to 100 subscribers and uh but i know we've been going for about an hour and i gotta be at work tomorrow morning so rich where can people find you just uh for those who haven't watched this in the past yeah flyingrich.com all my social media is aggregated there the you get to my website uh, youtube site from there and my instagram so all of my posts are up there so wherever flyingrich.com is sold Okay, that will be in the description. Are you on Gunstreamer as well? Yes, I am. Okay. So, so I have like Flying Rich Opinion, Flying Rich <laughs> Tech. All right, sweet, sweet. So, all right, Richard, I appreciate you coming on. For those who have listened, I know it was kind of a very lexidatical night. I know it's at 9 o'clock, so I don't really want to come on. I understand that. But uh, I appreciate you all listening. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get notified when a video goes live. And we'll see you next week. Richard, thank you very much. Oh, no and problem. Have a go, everybody. And.